Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Monday Two Cents. This Tuesday morning. I know it's a Tuesday morning, but I also know it feels like a Monday to you. So that's why you're receiving this Monday Two Cents this Tuesday morning. Now, sadly, this is going to be our last episode for this season. We're going to take a short break for about two months. Then we can resume with a whole different branding, montage, look and feel, and more interesting segments. Hopefully next season. But before we continue with all that, let's do this. Now this has been one of the saddest week in our country. I mean, because we all know what happened. Now I'm going to get straight to the point and talk about all that in our last week's recap. Now last week was one of our saddest weeks in the country, having lost 150 plus lives. Very innocent youngsters, young Kenyan citizens, all the way in Karissa University College. And we all know because of the Al Shabaab attack, terror attack, I mean, that really happened on Friday. Now, people always tell me that I come across as a skeptic of the government. And uh, I just want to contract and say the government doesn't just mean Jubilee or JAP or, 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 or TNA or URP. It's anybody who is representing the Kenyan citizen, either in parliament, the senate, uh, the county government, and in the cabinet, even the judiciary. Because there's a reason why we put these guys there to be able to take care of the collective matters of the Kenyan citizen. There are a couple of things that actually disgust me when we talk about this uh, massacre that happened in Kenya. Number one, we lost 150 plus students, innocent Kenyans. It is said that we killed four of the terrorists who attacked the students. I'm a little bit confused because the government says it has killed all the terrorists who actually were attacking the students, but we are still putting up a bounty in the event that you who you know the whereabouts of a couple of more terrorists, which makes begs the question, did we really kill all of them? Or are there some who actually escaped? I mean, I really need that addressed. Number two, I'm disappointed by the some of the government leaders, maybe even uh, civil society leaders and uh, and the clergy, because all they do each and every day is to condemn these acts just by word of mouth. I don't really see how condemning these acts help people need to do something. Our traditional media has made it known that. During the time of the attack, the record squad, which was actually responsible for actually eliminating the enemy, took a bus from Nairobi all the way to Garissa. Yet the minister of security takes a chopper to the scene of the, of the crime. And I'm wondering, who needs to get there faster? Is it the record squad or Nkaseri? I don't understand where are the priorities in this Serikali. Number two, I also feel like our government has failed us because the previous week the president clearly showed us how much corruption is bringing our country down and how so many leaders are mentioned in this corruption scandal and it actually tells me this is why our security forces don't have resources to equip them to be able to handle this kind of attacks on top of that there's incompetence now, our president was a little bit actually quite emotional because after the attack he sent the illegally recruited 10,000 cadets into training and I don't really see that as very presidential. I thought he was very emotional because now these boys or girls will take I don't know about a year before their training is completed. They're not going to save any Garissa student. I mean, it's a gold case. So now, I'd rather the courts do what they do best. The recruitment is done legally so that we can actually beef up competence if there is any in our security forces. So I thought that was a bit irrational, emotional, and more so illegal. So fine, we killed the four guys. 150 plus of our guys were killed. How were we helping by parading the four dead bodies of the terrorists? I mean, why would we really celebrate for killing four guys and they killed 150 plus of our own? Why are our troops still in Somalia? Do we really have an intelligence service? And what on the street is that people were warned about these attacks. You know those SMSs that we always ignore? 
I think the intelligence service, if we have it, to start taking them serious. Now, yesterday I was watching news and the people who were brought to discuss this issue were irrelevant people and these guys who are responsible for these documents should come up front and answer questions because there are so many questions out there. Yes, it's a time of mourning. Yes, we need to come across as a united nation and everything but still, questions need to be answered. That is the only way we can improve and actually rid of all these unnecessary attacks we are getting. Anyway, that has been the one major event very sad event that happened last week and really it's a dark moment, it's a dark day there was no Easter for me, there was no Easter for so many families it was not a happy weekend, it was not a holiday but that has been the week that was so here's our next segment of I want Ever wonder why? Every time you go to campus to do your undergraduate, they call it Bachelor of something, Bachelor of so and so, Bachelor of all this. My question is this What happened to the ladies? Why is it a bachelor's degree? Why not a spinster's degree? How does, was there a proof of concept from us bachelors, from them to name these uh, courses as Bachelor of this, this, and that? Do you wonder the same thing? Because I wonder the same thing. Tell me what you think. Yesterday I made a point of visiting the Chiroma mortuary where the bodies of the students who lost their lives are laid. To just get to empathize with the families that are going through that tough time and to be able to just have that real feeling of what is really going, going on. Because it's very possible for us to just see those numbers and the news on our screens and just not really feel what these fellow Kenyans are feeling. So I saw, and truly, those guys really got hurt. I mean, they were brutally killed. Some with bullet holes, bullet wounds, some whose heads have popped out, some of the boys' throats were slit. It is a very sad situation. I mean, I am convinced we are being punished for a mistake made by somebody in this country. Someone somewhere needs to take the fall for this. But anyway, I'd like to appeal to all of you to just stand in prayer for the families that are going through this really a tough time. If you go to the mortuary yourself, you'll be able to feel what these families are feeling. You'll see their tears, see their agony, their anguish, their pain. And then you'll really understand that this is actually not a joke, it's not a laughing matter, it's not something to just try and politicize things. The government needs to come out clean if they drop the ball. They just say, okay, fine, we drop the ball, we are sorry, we are trying to actually improve, not try to uh, justify so many things like the minister of, uh, I think, foreign affairs, that lady was saying that, yeah, we have blocked so many attacks before, this is just one of those. No, these are people's kids, these are people's brothers, nephews, nieces, daughters. I mean, hey, the government... And indeed, all Kenyans need to just unite, pray for this family, pray for our security, pray for our leaders to be sane in their minds because the decisions they're making clearly is just insane. And I hope we're going to be strong as a nation. You've been watching Two Cents. Have a lovely week ahead. Remember, this is our last episode. Go to our YouTube channel, actually subscribe. Check out my uh, Twitter handle at Masinda Francis, at Wex Media KE. And you'll be able to check out all our now 14 episodes that we have been running every week since we began this year hope to see you after our break with more better segments see you next time